Okay, how about a really cool application of differential equations, and that is population growth modeling. So I went to the National Center for Health Statistics website, and I found this little fact. In the year 2018, the birth rate in the United States was 11.6 people per 1,000 people. I'd like to think a little bit about what this fact means and use it to develop a mathematical model for population growth in the US. So first of all, let's make a simplifying assumption so that we can think of this as a, um, not just a measurement for one year, but a measurement that would remain valid over multiple years so that we can use it to model population growth over multiple years. Let's imagine that this number, 11.6 people per 1,000 people, that's true for every year. 2018, 2019, 2017, 2016, let's assume that it's the same measurement. Of course, it's gonna change from year to year, but let's assume that it's the same. Okay. Let's try to make sense of what this fact is, what this rate is, what it measures. First, let's think about the units. So it's 11.6 people per 1,000 people, but that's a measurement that takes place over a year. So it's actually per year. So it has units of people over people times time, or one over time. So seem like strange units, but that's what they are. 11.6 people per 1,000 people per year. Now. If I uh, simplify this to write it instead of 11.6 per 1,000, I just take 11.6 divided by 1,000, I get a number which I'll call k. So the birth rate here is 0.0116, and that's units of one over time. So let's see if we can use this number to describe how the population would change from one year to the next. So I'm gonna write delta p to mean the population change over the course of a year. Delta t is the change in time, which is one year. Well, how much does the population change in one year? Well, it doesn't change necessarily by k because k is the birth rate per 1,000, k is this birth rate per, basically per capita. So I have to multiply by the number of people, I have to multiply k by the number of people in order to get the total change in population over the course of that one year. So the change in population, delta p, is k times p, that's the birth rate times the, the total population times delta t, the change in time. Now, if I divide both sides by delta t, I get this slightly different looking equation. Delta p over delta t equals kp. Now, what you'll notice here is this is an average rate. This is a rate, it's an average rate. It's the change in population over time when I'm measuring that over the course of one year. All right, we're actually very close to having a differential equation right now. What this is saying is it's saying that there's a general idea. The rate of growth, or the rate of change of the population is gonna be proportional to the size of the population itself. Proportional as in it's gonna be a multiple of the size of the population itself. That's this general idea that we've developed here. So let's see if we can turn this into a differential equation. Well, delta P over delta T, that's, this is measured over the course of a year. Let's imagine that it's something which is continuously changing. So it's a very small delta T, which would produce then a much smaller delta P, but uh, that's okay. So I would get from delta P delta over delta T, that would become a DP over DT. That would be an instantaneous rate rather than an average rate. And that DP DT is gonna be equal to KP. So that's this, the, the differential equations version of this idea that the rate of growth of the population is gonna be proportional to the current size of the population. The difference here being that uh, this statement is about an average rate, and this statement is about an instantaneous rate. So now uh, we have a differential equation, dp dt equals kp, which says the instantaneous rate of the change of the population is proportional to the population itself. And we also have an initial value, p of zero equals p zero, where p zero is just the starting population. That guy right there then is a initial value problem, an IVP for the population. Okay, well, we've already solved a differential equation that looks a lot like dp dt equals kp. We found a general solution of c e to the t when k was one, but in general it would be c e to the kt. And if we plug in this initial value, we'll find that c equals p0. So we get a solution to this initial value problem, which looks like p of t equals p0, initial population, times e to the kt. Great. What I'd like to do is use this model to look at um, United States population growth. And I'd like to use actual data to compare what the United States population growth actually is with what this model would say that it is. 
So let's see what this model says about the US population. We've got a Mathematica file here, and in this Mathematica file, we can import US census data from 1790 to 2010, and we can compare this data with the population growth model that we just developed. So let's start by taking a quick look at the census data. So first I'll import it. I have it in a CSV file. And um, this data is a little hard to read when it comes in. Uh, it's sent in as a, as a list like this. Uh, let's put it in a table with some headings on the table so we can read it a little better. So here we are. Here it is in a table with headings on the table. Uh, the data is the year since 1790, so starting off at zero, that's the year 1790, 10 is the year 1800, etc., all the way up to 220, which is the year 2010. At each of those years, we're given a population in millions. So I have 3.9 million in 1790, etc., all the way up to 308.7 million U.S. population in 2010. Okay, so the first thing we should do is plot it, so we can just see what it looks like. If we just plot it by itself, it, it looks pretty much like an exponential growth curve. It looks pretty convincing that it's exponential growth, and maybe our model will do a good job. Uh, let's use the information that we got from our model. So let's plot solutions to dbd, dpdt equals kp with p of 0 equals 3.9. Well, where did that come from? Well, that's my starting point at the year 1790, 3.9 million. So that'll be my initial value. Now we're going to assume that k is the same thing that we measured in 2018, which obviously is a little bit problematic, but it's nice just to try it, see what it looks like. So k is going to be 0 0.0116, it's 11.6 births per 1,000 people in a year. Okay, let's plot it. Interesting. So here's the original census data, and here is the mathematical model, the prediction made by the model, that initial value problem you'll see that it's really underestimating US population growth. And it would be a good thing to pause for a moment and to think about why this might be, like what's going on here. Okay, hopefully you paused and thought about it. The first thing that comes to mind for me is that we are really underestimating the birth rate. So we use this fact K is 0 0.0116. Well, maybe the birth rate was a lot higher, or it used to be a lot higher, and it's just gone down recently. And if you know much about birth rates, you'll know that that's, that is the case. Um, the birth rates in the uh, late 1700s, early 1800s through late 1800s, I think were, was more on the order of 50 people per 1,000 people. Um, I don't know exactly how many of those people survived. Infant mortality was a lot higher back then. But anyway, it has gone down a lot. So maybe let's increase our guess here. Let's put it up to 0 0.2. Let's say 21.6 people per 1,000 people. Oh, okay. Well, that looks a little better. It's still a little funky because it kind of grows, underestimates, and then it begins to really overestimate. So that might tell us that we should begin to kind of doubt our model. Uh, we should think about what other complicating factors might be affecting uh, the outcome of the model versus what's actually happening in the data. But anyway, it's a, it's a good, it's a good um, first pass, a good first pass at looking at whether or not uh, the U.S. population is growing exponentially. I'd like to do a little bit more just to kind of show you the things that we can do with computing that are sort of fun and visual. Uh, what I'm going to do is create an interactive display of dpdt equals kp, and I'm going to manipulate k. Okay, so here, what I can do is change the value of k dynamically to see if I can find a curve that fits nicely. So right around here at our point 0.116, there it is, still pretty low. Let's bring it up and let's just see if we can find something that fits nicely. Hmm, doesn't really look like it is. It's just not going to fit nicely. So my conclusion here by looking at these different k values for that particular initial value problem is that exponential growth really isn't the right thing here. And there's a couple of reasons why we might think this. One is we might think, well, okay, exponential growth isn't right because the K is changing. Or maybe we might think it's just simply not, not the right model. And so what I'd like to do is look at a different model that we haven't discussed explicitly, but it'll be, it'll be nice just to, to get a glance at it. 
and that is something called the logistic model. And the logistic model is dp dt equals kp times 1 minus p over m. Same initial value. So now I have a k, which is like a birth rate, and that k, if, if, uh, if p over m is small, if it's close to 0, then it's basically dp dt equals kp. Now where this model starts to act differently is as p gets larger, this p over m term starts to limit the total size of the population. m is called a carrying capacity in the logistic model. Now what I'd like to do is graph this model for different values, the results of this model for different values of k and m. So I can turn up the k and then I can turn up the m and you can see that you start to get something which is a little bit more nuanced, this curve here. So I can even, I'm just kind of guessing here, but here's a pretty nice fit. How's that right about there? There are statistical methods for finding really good fits of curves when you have per unknown parameters and you have data to use to, to fit to use to fit these parameters, but I'm not going to use those. I'm just using a visual fit. The statistical methods will do something similar, just more precisely. So you can see that we get a pretty good fit with this other model, which is pretty close to exponential growth, but it's got an extra factor here, which limits the population growth as it gets larger. And that's a key thing about the logistic model. So that gives you just a peek at two levels of sophistication in a differential equations model for population growth and how those two different levels of sophistication can fit with the actual US population census data.